Hey guys, Troll 9002. It is 8:27:22 at 4:08 in the afternoon, and uh, we actually did get out of church about an hour or so ago. But um, service was kind of rough on me today. Um, I'll elaborate in a second. So I had to go get some food, and I got the bad food because that's what I do. Because I'm weird, and I'm a fat girl. That's what I do. Um. And before y'all say anything about that comment I just made, it's true. Look, I'm a big girl. I'm lying to you if I'm telling you I'm skinny. I'm lying to you if I tell you I'm not. I'm a big girl. It is what it is. Okay? But, um, you know, <laughs> today really smacked me in the face. God really smacked me in the face with the things that I've been looking up and reading on this week. And, and it all just kind of circled around. It's really, it's really amazing to me. Because words that I've been looking up and reading about are selfishness and um, self-ambition and, you know, trying to figure out why I, I tear everything apart. You know, like my family, like people at work, you know, and it's not, it's not physically, but mentally it is. I mean, I'm not going to go into specific details because it would take all day. And I don't think anybody would watch a video that long. Besides, I only have 32 minutes on the camera. So, not going to go into all that. But, I have been looking for answers for that all day. Or all week. In my daily readings. And, um, I don't know. Bishop just kind of nailed the hammer. Or hit the nail on the head with the hammer today. And, um, he started in Genesis chapter 1 and he did verse 6 through 10 actually yeah he did verse 6 through 10 and it's about how God was the first to admit self-worth and you know all of us well at least those who admit they think like I do we all know that if we feel like we admit to our self-worth then we're boasting or bragging it's not right you shouldn't do that whatever but God did it first and, um, you know, he created the heavens and the earth, and he created this, that, and the other thing. I'm paraphrasing. I know I'm bad at it, but he created a lot of stuff, and what did he say after he created it? It is good. What I have created is good. Well, that's, you know, that's admitting self-worth. What I did was good. And like the bishop said, there's got to be something in your life that you have done good. And I could name a lot, but again, that makes me feel like I'm boasting, bragging, and, and I don't want my works known. Because I don't want credit for them, you know? That's just how I've always been, you know? I love hymns because of the monks that wrote them. And when the monks would write their hymns because they wrote them for God, they would not put their name on them. So whoever wrote the first hymn, if they were a good, honest monk, you would never know who wrote the first hymn because they didn't put their name on it. And that's just, you know, that's kind of the philosophy that I kind of kept, you know. My good works are my good works. God sees them. I don't need to tell you about them. That's boasting and bragging, right? Um, and when God made man, he said it was very good. And that kind of hit a chord, you know, hey. You know, God made us, and he said it was very good. I'm sitting in the driveway. It was raining today, so I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to chance the driving in the rain or foul weather or, you know, that's not very smart. So it's still raining, and I'm sitting in the car waiting for it to ease up before I go in the house. And, um, I just kind of wanted to get this off my head before I lose it. Because you all know how fast it goes in one ear and out the other. And even if I stick my finger in my ear, it doesn't stop it. It just... But that's why I write it down, too. <laughs> and I'm, I'm reading my paraphrased notes. Because it really was a good service today. And I really do appreciate everybody and the man. And, um... And the bishop. And, um... But he said, God doesn't want us comparing things. He has, He's promised us. You know, like... This person over here gets a big old T-bone steak, and I just have hamburger. So what? It all came from the same cow, right? How is that steak better than my hamburger? It all came from the same cow. You shouldn't compare. You know, and as kids, well, 
Because growing up, kids, we kind of learned that the hard way because, you know, when you're growing up and you're a 90s kid, you're an 80s, 90s kid, you know, that kid always had the cool clicky pen with the 40 million different colors and I only have one pen. Well, they both wrote. Yeah, one got to write with one more colors than you, but they still wrote, you know? Um, so you were blessed to have the pen that you wrote with and took notes with and they... They had the same thing. They had a pen to write and take notes with. See, to me, that's simplifying it. You know, the best of my ability. Because, yeah, there's always going to be somebody with that hotter, flashier car or that million dollar outfit that you just love but you know you will never have. You know what? You don't need it. If you needed it, God would have provided it. That's where it is. And, um, we were not created to compare, Bishop said. Who do men say I am? And who do you say I am? Jesus asked his people. And they all said, Christ Jesus. And, and that led us to a different place to affirmation and confirmation of who I am. And he asked us several questions, which this is where it got really rough for me. Um, the first one was two things. He wanted us to write this down. So me being the pen girl, <laughs> he wanted us to write down two things that I have, that I value about myself. Well, the only thing that I could come up with, and it was only one, and it's not because I'm lazy and I didn't think about it. It's just, I don't think of myself that way. I wrote down, I can give good compliments and y'all know I can. And then the second question was two reasons why you should be loved. And um, I had no answer for that. And I know about 50 of you out of 134 subscribers will sit there and throw cliches at me. I hate that. You know I hate that. Cliches are not from the heart. They're just words repeated. And for 38 years of hearing the same words repeated, they just have no meaning for me. And um... He said that you are of extreme worth when you make your presence known. And the example he gave was um, when he was a teacher, I guess over in Hamilton County, he would walk into the classroom with complete authority. So them kids knew, you know, who the teacher was. And I guess that's, <laughs> that's where I kind of lack too. But, and the last one is what makes you necessary to be here? And, um, you know, those are very hard questions for me because really, I don't know. And I'm not even kidding. I just, I don't know. I re really don't think my presence is necessary, but there's a reason I'm still here. I just haven't figured it out yet. And the only thing I could come up with to answer maybe all of these questions is I am essential because I know what it's like to be alone and unwanted. So I know how to lift others up so they don't feel that way. And that's the only thing I can come up with. And it's the only thing I'm good at. I mean, I can sit there and I can lift people up all day. But when it comes to lifting up myself, forget it. I'm not worth it. I, I don't know why. Well, I do know why. But I'm not going to go into it. Why I think that way. And um, it just is what it is. I don't want to lie. And every time I lie to myself and I get my self-esteem up and get everything up, something bad comes back to remind me just, <laughs> you know, it just comes back to say, hey, you ain't nothing, go away. Or we don't need you, go away. You know, and it just, it's not worth the hurt to me. I mean, I'm not calling God a liar. I believe when he created man, he said it was very good. I believe at a time we were all good, but... <laughs> I just, I don't understand what good is anymore. Um, Bishop also ran over to Psalm 139, and he started in verse 13. And he gave the example of um how... When, when God formed us in the womb, we were perfect. And, um, you know, when we came out, we were in God's image. So we were perfect. And it was what? Very good. 
Yes. And um, see, I learned that. I, I did learn today, guys. <laughs> Give me some credit. Um, so, you know, and um, he said that over time, things happen and... He never did go into why or, you know, who caused them or, you know, like the example he gave. Sorry. <laughs> the example he gave was his back. And his back isn't how it was when he came out, you know, when he was born. And there were just things that happened and changed that changed that for him. And, um, but, and see... That's another example of what I'm talking about is a week ago, I lost a very, very good friend who I, st I pretty much started at Walmart with her. And um, we've been battling, she, she has, she had, thank God she doesn't have it anymore. She had brain cancer. And um, I've never in my whole life had anything like brain cancer, so I really don't know exactly what she's feeling but in my lifetime as a teenager I have already had an aneurysm that should have killed me it was the size of a golf ball and where it was sitting in my brain was causing mini strokes and that's the only way we figured out before it burst that it was there because my grandmother my mom's mom kept ragging on my parents because she would watch the daytime stuff like Dr. Oz and the doctors and all that afternoon stuff after her soap operas and um they would you know they'd be doing a feature or a show about how to see somebody having a stroke or so signs of strokes and stuff like that and um so she would watch me and she would always nag me why are you doing that why are you holding your hand up like that why are you doing this why are you doing and it drove me nuts but you know what? She also rode my parents until they did something wrong. Or until they did something about it. Because I guess they didn't realize that there was anything wrong. But, you know, that's okay. I had actually switched hands in school because I'm a lefty. I'm a lefty. And I was writing with my left hand, but I had to switch to my right hand. So now I'm ambidextrous. Yay. Um, so if, if somebody has a problem with me writing with my left hand, I can just hurry up and switch over to the right. You know, just save the drama for your mama. And, um, in middle school, I had, I just switched hands because my left hand couldn't keep up. And, um, so after, after having brain surgery, yes, they know I have a brain. They started over here and peeled my face back, kind of like Face Off, the movie. Um... There was a lot of things that were really, really different to me afterwards. I mean, I had no hair. And and the kids that used to make fun of me in elementary and middle school, and in middle school after we moved up here, they didn't go away. No, they just had more ammo. And, um, but you know what? <laughs> it went until a couple of years later that we actually learned that to do the kind of bypass surgery that they did on my aneurysm because what they did was they bypassed it and they took a harvested an artery from right here and that's what's there now and um they actually have to kill you to do that to do that surgery because you can't have blood flowing through a you know open artery spurting all over your head <laughs> so they actually had to kill me to do that and yeah it was clinically but you know, I got to thinking a couple years after here, after after we learned that, I was not saved by God at that time. I didn't even know God. I had no clue. I, I was doing the best I can, but it's very, very hard for me. And my friend Ryan at work, he just, he just keeps telling me that that devil's going to get me and he's going to come at me any way he can. And it's been hard past two weeks so far um but I've gotten into a routine like I said where I get to work early and I just sit here and I read and um but you know he took my friend last Saturday and now today he's taken another friend which you know both were suffering and I'm really not I'm not excited glad but I'm kind of glad you know they're no longer suffering and um the one lady I can't tell you 
I can't tell you too much because I'm not sure if all her family's been notified yet, and I said I wouldn't, so. The one lady I went to church with, um, she's the only one that kept up with us after we got kicked out. And, um, she, uh, she went home to, to be with the Lord and her husband and her son. And, um, please say prayers for her daughter. Because, um, I think her daughter's about my age. But, um, it's going to be hard on her because now she's an orphan. She lost her brother and her father and her mother. And thankfully, I'm, I'm very, very thankful that she has a... And I know this sounds dumb, but I'm thankful she has a man in her life to help her. Speaking of prayer requests, um, we had a request for uh, Joseph Waters. Apparently, they're in the hospital and they need prayers. We're not sure the details, but Justin Waters. Sorry, Joseph Waters. Just lift Joseph up in your prayers. And, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because... Kind of after those questions, I couldn't help but get away. And I got to trying to think and trying to think. And really, I don't I don't have any answers for these questions. You know, if, 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 it, if it was somebody asking me at work, I could probably fake my way through it. But in the house of the Lord, I will not fake my way through it. That's not right. <clears throat> and, you know... I know a lot of people would sit there and go, oh, she just wants attention, she just wants drama, she just wants a pity party. But you know what, after 38 years, 38 long years of constantly being put down, never being uplifted, always being told you're not good enough, things that you do that somebody else does better, you know, you work your butt off, but there's always somebody that has that better job. I can't compete. And, yep, yeah, Bishop said not to compare yourself, but it's not me that's doing the comparing. And I can't help what other people's do. But I can try and control how it makes me feel. And you know what? When I get home, I just let it all loose. And there are days... Where I just, I don't understand. I don't understand why somebody's better than me. I just, I don't get it. I don't think I'm better than anybody else. You know, I just, I don't, I can't, it's not that I don't, I don't comprehend. That's what it is. I just, I don't comprehend. Um, I know Blue skies will be along soon, I'm sure. If not, there's always tomorrow. God willing. And, um, I want y'all to have a good week. I do. Because it's gonna be another week. That if we make it, you know, we must have a purpose. Right? 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 Right. Um, best advice is to just tell people that you love them make sure they know they're wanted and um yeah the next person that you figure oh they're just looking for attention or they just want drama or whatever you know what stop and listen to them don't just assume that you know because you don't know you'll never understand their story until you listen and, you know, you can assume, oh, well, they're like this person, or they're like their sibling, or they're like their mother, or their father, or whatever. No. There's a reason they are the way they are. And, like I said, I'm not going to go into detail why I am the way I am. Because God's still working on me. And I'm faithful. And, um, we're, we're going to get through it. And I know one day I'll change. But this is not that day yet. Um, but yeah, you guys have a good week. Don't forget our prayer requests. And um, hope to catch you next Sunday. Y'all take care. Have a good day. Bye.